Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy hey folks welcome to the podcast um today i'm joined by lawrence kemble cook who is the founder of pavegen lawrence how you doing hey hey guys really excited to be here today um yeah i'm doing doing wonderful today in uh being being it stuck at home uh, and I as, as i guess you are too i'm admiring your paintings in the background of our video Thank chat you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Little hearts, love theme. You're, you've got a nice background. A little cactus, a little bit yeah, of art, nice lamb. I've got like a, I've tried to make the the jungle in my house as much as I can, which which is which is good. Nice coving as well in the ceiling. It's all about coving, right? You, go, see, you, you don't get coving in in Austin. Definitely not my one. No, no, no. I think we've got some decent. I've got some decent coving up there. There you go. All like that. How so you now feeling? actually we turned into. Architects Anonymous and that analyzing like that. interior design schematics <laughs> houses. How are you finding working at home? Yeah, it's great. I'm <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm I recently uh, moved house and I'm in a very quiet part of London. And nice. uh, you know the world. I, I hear ambulances a lot and uh, helicopters flying over my head to King's College Hospital. But apart from that, it's, it's quiet and I can focus and really get get a lot done at the moment. Yeah. Can you see your like working style change then? Like once we can go back to work, can you see yourself walking, working a bit more at home or? I think it's weird that we've all had this video conferencing technology available for a long time. You know, Zoom's been around for a while, but people haven't really used it en masse. But now, you know, my, my uh, seven-year-old mother is a yoga teacher and she oh, now wow. runs digital yoga lessons with her uh, 20 plus students and, and they're loving it. She's doing two or three Zoom conference calls a day and she's oh, learned nice. how to do breakout rooms now. But, but ultimately, I think that business owners are realizing that that office space isn't um, isn't absolutely necessary to having a successful business. So I yeah. think that we'll see people being more friendly towards working at home because, hey, it work, if it works now, why can't it work in two years time? Yeah, yeah. And also office space, especially if, especially if you're in London, is expensive. I mean, so you probably don't need a desk per person. Well, yeah, but, yeah. I think people have been talking about hot desks and, and that yeah. has been one fad that has been, I think, frowned upon by most people. You know, finding, you know, Gary from Floor Free is now sitting in the <laughs> seat when you were yeah. really excited about looking through the window. But ultimately, you don't need yeah. offices and, and people can be as productive from home. I don't think it's forever. And you know, I do look forward to seeing my team again. Yeah. Uh, in, the, yeah. in, in the flesh but it but it does work and I think we'll see we'll see more more companies doing this yeah I think the, the, the key things people have some choice because still like humans need human contact and it's quite depressing being at home for long stretches of time without proper human contact so, yes we're, we're really into the idea of um, it, we've got to improve employee uh, mental um, well-being and also physical well-being so we'll we'll do things like we'll have a a hangout on a Friday and we'll all have drinks together or yeah. we'll just have a, a check-in hangout at 1 30 for lunch and anyone could join who wants and I think it's really important to monitor that and, and check on people because it's hard like hey everyone has a bad day like if I watch the news too much my day goes real bad real quick you know so I think it's, it's yeah. about balancing yourself out in the right kind of way <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not watching the news or reading it a diet of negativity in the morning is definitely not good for you yeah 100 I mean, percent there's nothing in there that I need to know right now. <laughs> it's yeah. COVID, 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 COVID. Yeah, I think, you know, those important messages, you know, like supporting uh, social distancing and supporting our NHS, like they're there, yeah. they run, run throughout yeah. on every media platform. But beyond doing and enforcing, you know, what the, the hard work the government's doing, I don't think there's much else to be gained from it. You know, I'm really right. enjoying... I'm doing a, a morning cycle, doing 50k every morning through central London, which oh, is wow. near where I live, um, and for no, you know no longer than an hour. But oh my god, it's amazing! You know, it's quiet. I don't see anyone. I don't see any cars. I've never seen this in my you know 30 plus years of being in London. I've never seen the city so quiet. And there are some special things to come of it that you can really appreciate. Yeah. 
have gratitude for. 50k in an hour is great going. No yeah, traffic well, on so, the road. I, mean, I, I don't want to say that I've done it more than an hour because that'd be against the guys. <laughs> no, absolutely, line, absolutely. It may have run over slightly. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite weird. Like, go. I was going to say, hopefully, when this comes out, social distancing will be uh, removed and I won't have the police turning up at my door saying I went out for a, a two long bicycle definitely ride. Not. Definitely not. But it's interesting. I'm learning a lot of, as probably you are, some like interesting leadership like lessons and. You know, certainly like staying in touch with the team, thinking about their health, the physical aspect as well. I'm doing, like your mum actually, I'm doing, I do a little yoga, but I'm doing a, an online CrossFit every day. I'm feeling stronger and fitter than ever. Yeah, um, I mean, imagine what you can do with, with all those burpees, you know. You'll never before would you have done that, right? I'm finished you know, with burpees. <laughs> yeah, or, or you'd, you'd be out late at dinner and drinks and you wouldn't yeah. maybe be out for every day. But now it's like there's no excuses, you know. You're no, just no. at home. So I think it's, it's, a, also, it's a really good time for self-development. Yeah, definitely. Because also when you're, when you're going to work, you've got the commuting time uh, there and back then you, you, you tend to go to a gym or you go to a yoga, yoga studio. And so balancing that in your diary is like sometimes quite challenging if you've got others to think of, partner and whatever. Now suddenly you've got so much free extra time to do stuff with. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. great. It's great for everyone, right? To keep up. So what's your story? How did you, uh, how are you doing what you're doing? Well, I guess my story uh, is, is we make paving slabs that generate energy and when you walk on the floor, it converts your, your weight to electrical power, but it, but it also produces data so we can generate insights from, from your footstep. Now, we're trying to change the way people look at energy, but I guess my story is, stepping back, um, I, was, uh, I, I did a placement, like an internship at E.ON, so one of the largest energy companies in Europe. I was working there and um, they said to me, Lawrence, we'd like you to build us a streetlight powered by solar energy and powered by winds. So... Off I went, trying to build a solar powered streetlight. Now, it was for cities. And the problem in our cities is that you don't get very good sunlight all day long because the buildings are tall. And you know, solar and wind work very well in a desert, out at sea, on a rooftop, and not in the city. So I actually failed at Eon. Okay, and right. I got fired. So hanging right. my head in shame, I left Eon thinking, you know, I was an engineer and I thought, I've screwed up. I didn't make it work. So I am. Um, I kept thinking about this problem of energy in cities and um, I returned to Loughborough University where I was right. studying industrial design and technology. And I thought, you know, what if there is a solution that is literally under our feet? What if it's all around us? So I spent a year at Loughborough building prototypes and uh, I was lucky to win like 5K in funding from the Royal Society Amazing. of Arts. And, and 5K at that time was phenomenal. Like that, that's probably is the same as what we could do now with half a million you know we it right. went really far right. and um, i left uni got lots of interest in the product and decided to launch it um i spent five years in my bedroom prototyping it in south london and the problem was no one would invest um because we didn't have any revenue um the other challenge was we hadn't got any proof points of our products so no one would buy it because they hadn't seen it working before so it's real chicken and egg stuff and Tough. it was inc incredibly challenging. And what happened was the government looked at it and they were going to see if they could help develop it. And, and they said, look, we've got an expert. And the expert called me up and said, look, it will never work. Give up. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, then I had a load of VCs and they were like, no, Lawrence, it will never work. Don't bother. And, and then my university tried to steal it from me and then say, give us the majority of the company. And so everything was set against me. And you know, I believe that entrepreneurs should be bold and confident and really take, make their own luck, essentially. So I thought, okay, I spent five years building this prototype, making it robust, you know, engineering it super well. And I thought, well, let's go and install it somewhere. So at 2 a.m., uh, me and a friend installed it illegally in the South Bank in London. Right. So there's a big fence. We throw the prototype over the fence. We have cement, we have cement mixers, buckets, water, pickaxes, all the equipment we need. We dig a hole in the ground, we cement it in place, we Amazing. plug it in the floor. So, so when you stand on the floor, simply put, one step will produce anywhere from one to 10 seconds of light. And if lots of people oh. walk, you get light, right? So we installed it at South Bank, plugged into lighting, looked good. Uh, and the next day on our website, we said, the future of energy is here. And I put a picture. And uh, Westfield Mall called me and said, hey, 
did you do an installation last night? And I was like, yeah. They said, did it work? I said, yeah. They didn't ask me, was it illegal or not? So that's important. And, um, and we closed uh, a significant six digit deal off the back of that news for them. So I went from a crazy inventor in my bedroom through to uh, someone who had to go and hire a team and make a product work. And, and then, you know, that was the start of it. And, and our, our, my journey really started from there. Amazing. Amazing. And so did Westfield give you an order? Was that your first, uh, your first order? Exactly. Yeah. The six digit deal was an, an order to be installed at the Olympic Park Westfield site. Nice. So this was what, so this was after, obviously after the Olympics. So what are we talking about? 24? Yeah. So it was around like 2011, 2012 time. Perfect. And what did that enable you to do? So you started then, you could actually build a business from that. Yeah, so we knew that all that it was really exciting to have a floor that generated energy. We knew yeah. that the markets were look, were anywhere where people walk. So you've got offices, stadium, transport hubs. These include airports, train station, schools. There's so many places you can use paved jam. We we have like I have I have dairy farms trying to buy it off me. I have horse training paddocks where they want to use it. You know, people powered playgrounds like the opportunity is endless. Wherever people move or, or animals move, you can use it. So we realized you know, key markets, you know, transport and offices and so forth and cities. So started the company, really started developing the product now. It's one of the harshest areas in the world to engineer the floor. You've got vandalism, you've got huge temperature fluctuations, you've got massive forces going through it. And then you've also got a product that needs to be uh, to generate energy from as many people as possible and it's generate energy from you but also a very small child so you've got to like yeah. calibrate it and everything so we spent another five years almost it feels like that <laughs> engineering the product to make it work and if you for example i have to make the product work in minus 30 degrees centigrade but i also okay. have to make it uh, work at 70 degrees centigrade, which is how hot it gets in the Middle East when the sun is on it all day. So, so, so it's one of the toughest engineering challenges known to man. Um, and that's what we've been doing now. Is it, It's in 36 countries um, wow. so far. Um, right. We've had over half a billion steps on a pave gen um, to date. Um, and we've also been lucky enough to work with some of the largest companies in the world um, and also on some of the biggest or, or the, the biggest buildings projects in the world, including right now we're working on the biggest building project on the world uh, today. So there's nice. some really exciting projects to come out of it. And, you know, we've got a team in London and Cambridge and it's something that I never thought it would have got to this point. Um, I dreamed of it, but now, yeah. you know, it really is. And, the momentum is strong and we're bringing out new products all the time. So there's lots you can do with, with a, a kinetic energy floor. I think it's great. I mean, often you see like the biggest thing people give up just before they make it. Uh, and a lot of the time when you're starting a business, like patience is, is really key. Um, and you, you've taken, you know, 10 years, it sounds like to really like persevere, get the product, you know, get the sales, overcome all of these obstacles. Um, and, and full credit, you know, now it seems to be uh, really paying off. Yeah, I, th I think entrepreneurship got cool around, I, I feel like entrepreneurship got cool when everyone heard who Zuckerberg was. I'm not yeah. condoning Zuckerberg. Modern but, day rock stars. <laughs> but, it, but it was a phenomenon <laughs> yeah. back in the day. And I think yeah. what we need to be really careful of is that we see so many stories about, oh, so-and-so built a company and one year later he, he had a billion dollars. And there's always going to be the WhatsApps of this world and these amazing yeah. unicorn stories. But not everyone's, very few businesses are actually like that. And yeah. it does take a lot of blood, sweat and tears. And there are amazing things that can come out of it, but they do take time. And as long as you're, you know, the market has to be right and the timing, you know, whenever I work with a business now, I say, look, make sure you're on a rising tide, you know, Make sure you're, you're sitting on something that is, is going to have exponential growth and, and, and your life will be good. You know, we, we were selling sustainable technology before sustainability was a thing. And now yeah. I always use a reference of the, the head of sustainability in a company was a dirty word back in the day. And yeah. they were left in the cellar next to the accountants and no one wanted to speak to them. Apart Cop from center. one day, they had a corporate report and they phoned up the sustainability person and said, give me something for my corporate report. But now 
that person yeah. is often on the board. And, and hey, that person is, is a woman as well now, which is even better. So we're getting gender equality, sustainability, but it, it is all changing. Um, but back in the day, oh my God, no one cared. And so we're really seeing a big shift on, in a mega trend, if you like, yeah. around connectivity, sustainability and urbanization. No, it's great. I mean, you've done like what most people can't do is you've developed a new product in a in a new industry and made it work. I mean, the other thing to mention for other entrepreneurs is you don't have to reinvent something. You know, you can just do something slightly better than someone else is doing already. And the other thing with the, with your market analogy, I always think it's like the line which in the wardrobe is you want to open the cupboard and walk into Narnia, not a broom cupboard. It needs to be big enough that you can really attack it and make some make some good money. Yeah, but also small small businesses and small markets in a niche can still be incredibly exciting. I mean, I, I, a good, really good example is a friend of mine called Michael Korn has a company called Quick Screen, and it's a, it's a dividing screen that goes into hospitals. So you you pull this screen out and you have an immediate divider. This guy's been going for a similar amount of time to me and ticking along, exciting business, but recently they just delivered in every single Nightingale hospital as part of the government's COVID response Amazing. because they can make makeshift cubicles that are quick. And so like right now is their time to shine. And I think if you're focusing on like one small area, get really good at it, know more about it than anyone else. And then at the right time, you can really start to flourish. It doesn't need to be, you know, the next Coca-Cola and not yeah. that we can down Coca-Cola on the show today. But no, no. as an example, you know, it, it doesn't yeah. need to be that. It can be something that can be you know, as simple as an innocent smoothie that then turns into a, a complete you know, conglomerate almost in, in the, what they've done and, and changed the, the way people look at uh, fitness and health as well. Definitely. No, definitely. So going back to your product, how does it actually generate electricity and work? So the paved gen tile, um, yeah. when you walk on the floor, converts your weight to electrical power. Now it does that because the, the downward force uh, um, goes into a circular motion. So it's like a flywheel. So the downward force spins a flywheel. This flywheel spins from two to 10 seconds. And every time you stand on it, that flywheel is generating energy through, through magnets and, and electromagnetic induction. That generates power that's then stored in batteries. Now we can store that energy for several days and then use it to power lighting. So a really good example is outside the White House um, in Washington DC in an area that's called the Dewpoint Circle. We have 10,000 people walking a day, and this powers the lights for four to 10 hours, depending on how many people walked. So we get around 10,000 people on average. There will be around five hours of illumination from people walking. But we also produce data. So what I realized is I put my first installation in Heathrow Airport, and I'll describe the tile to you for, for the listeners out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the tile, um, the first tile we built was a rectangle that was green, bright green. Um, then we changed it to a triangle because it was much more efficient, 200 times more efficient at, at capturing energy from people's steps. The, the, tr the triangle? Yeah, the triangle design of the floor when you walk right. on it. Why is that? Well, the reason is a rectangle. Um, if you imagine, you may have a book or business card on your desk. Um, if you stand on a rectangle and it bends, the corners yeah. are fixed, whereas yeah. we made a mesh of triangles so wherever you walked on the triangle would depress. It has to move. And it, it meant that wherever you walk, the triangle would, at one corner would drop down. So you don't lose any footsteps. So we put the rectangle into Heathrow and we realized that we only captured maybe half the steps because the rest were on the corners of the, of uh, the right. rectangle. And so, but what I did see is I saw kids would see the floor from 100 meters away and they run as fast as they could to them and then jump up and down on it. And they didn't know what it yeah. was. They didn't know what it was. But I realized that we'd almost created the gamification of energy. And, and was that even a good thing? You know, do you want kids to be running on it? I, then I saw old people saw it and would jump on it. And, and then I saw people at, outside the White House would spend their lunch break eating their sandwich, but jumping up and down all the time. And I was like, dude, Great. what are you doing? And they're like, I'm powering my city. I'm powering my city. And, and the reason people really love the fact that they are doing something, it might be yeah. small, like yeah. PaveGen is not going to power the world. And, and we're, but what it does do is, is give people this tremendous ownership. So we realized we created this magnetic thing on the floor that people really wanted to interact with. And now what we do is 
we've actually we generate data that allows us to do things like donate the energy of a footstep so we, you can walk on the floor and then pay it forward pay that step forward um, right. imagine if every time you shop and go at the moment during corona times we're queuing outside supermarkets imagine if you could queue for the supermarket on the floor and every step you made donated one pound to the nhs to buy ppe and a brand like uh, American Express would put their logo on the floor and then facilitate that donation. So we we believe that we are the future of uh, allowing people to make a difference through the power of a human step. And that's yeah. kind of the basis that we're working towards now. We need to get on that. We need to get on that straight away. Yeah, if, you, if anyone yeah. knows anyone of a big, big supermarket, uh, <laughs> we'd love to put some free paid gens down and help to make a change. Um, There'll be literally. someone listening. There'll be someone listening. Now, that's brilliant stuff. How long does it take you to install it? Well, the first page that I ever installed took me about two days to install one. And now, you did it on your own? I was doing and I was figuring yeah. it out. And yeah. then a year later, the Paris Marathon came to me and said, Lawrence, we'd like to cover the width of the Champs Elysees. So it's called it's like Avenue Foch that so leads up yeah, to yeah. the Champs Elysees. I've done and the Paris said, Marathon. Oh, you've done, have you done it? Yeah. yeah. How did you find it? Uh, well, compared to London, the crowd isn't as friendly. But um, it, it's funny. You, you, run, you run in London, everyone's like, come on, and they're shouting your name, and your name's on, the, on your chest and stuff. In France, the crowd were like, mm, I think I can do it better than you. You're not I running for it. because you, you've got a British name. And a Probably. Are, Probably. Are the, the Brits. They could I just see find, I was English. <laughs> I, I think I always find that whenever you have a British name, the Brits are the ones that always shout to you. Like, wherever you are in the world, the Brits see you and they're like, I'm going to have But I thought, you know, they could say Lewis, maybe named after King Louis. But then, yeah, yeah that didn't Change go Change your well name to be, uh, yeah, Louis or Pierre and you'd be fine next time. That'd have been fine. But the actual marathon was lovely. Um, but sorry, carry on with the story. So you did, she did your, your, your yeah, task. So, so it's, it's a cobbled street. And they yep. said, Lawrence, how long will it take you to install it? And I was like, uh, I'm not sure. And they said, can you do it in six hours? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do it in six hours. So I went away, I totally freaked out. And I spent a lot of time trying to work out how the hell do you install the width of a road that also has a camber, which means it's bent. And um, it sort of had a big curve on it. And I went away, I got the British Gurkhas to help me. And we ended up, we, we covered the entire width of the road in 55 minutes. Wow. So you can do it really quickly. So we, we work in two ways. One, you can install it on top of an existing floor. And then yeah. two, you can actually dig up the floor. And that's perfect on a new build. But when it's like an existing structure, it's just drop it on top and no one knows that they've walked up a little bit. It's only about this high. So it's 10 yeah. centimeters high. So, you know, a couple of inches high. So it's very, it's quite slim. Yeah. And I best overall, it's like low cost, right? I mean, they need to install it. The electricity is free. Yeah, I mean, our, our business model is interesting, right? So we compare it to Tesla. Okay, so the problem with hardware is you don't get economies of scale on day one. So how we work is the, the product itself is expensive to manufacture. We actually, we're hand making them in London. Okay, so okay. It, right. London is renowned for low cost mass production. It's, for, it's, it's renowned for other things, but not for production. But we, we make it in the UK because we're trying to make the best possible product we can. We're yeah. developing it. I've made over 700 production prototypes so far. And so are, you like three, to... are you like 3D printing them or how are you? Yes, yeah, so some elements will be 3D printed. Um, because it's a really hard wearing environment, we'll actually do yeah. things like um, CNC with a five axis machine from a solid lump of uh, aluminium or steel. Um, will be our prototypes. So it, it's we typically find that rapid prototyping won't be strong enough to withstand abuse on the floor. Um, but what we'll do is we'll make it in the UK, we'll refine it, we'll make it as efficient as we can, and then we'll potentially then move the production um, overseas. Um, but we would like to keep it in the UK for as long as we can. But yeah. then obviously the price point drops because my aim is although PageGen isn't isn't really low cost today, we aim to make it the same price as normal flooring one day, which means right. that you can put the floor down for free. 
And then you can donate the energy from people walking in famous tourist spots around the world, in every supermarket and every office around the world. Your steps can count and make a difference. And we really believe in the, the data that's generated from the floor. So it will speak to the cloud. You can understand how many people are walking. And, and the yeah. most important thing about it is the data we get is, is permission based. So we're not stealing information on, from people. We're actually a way that you go, hey, if you want to donate that one pound or that one dollar from your footstep, um, can you just tell me like roughly how old you are, please? And it's like a fair exchange of value between yeah. the consumer and the, the corporation. Back to your Tesla thing, like can, if, we, if I can drive my Tesla over my, over my paving uh, and generate my electricity to power my car, that'd be awesome. Well, yeah. So, you know, we we've actually we've done a partnership with Tesla. They gave us uh, I mean, an early model one and no we, we were driving the car over the page. Yet. Now, one of them broke. I'm not going to say which one we broke, but I think Elon Musk is a bit pissed off when we returned the car to him. On oh, the car um, break or your or, or your or your I, product? I'm not going to comment exactly on who broke or what. But right. There was some damage. And I do like to test things to destruction. Um, but in the future i think that we could take our kinetic technology you know it, it takes the the movement of people a small amount of movement um i think we could take that and we we could use it in in vehicle traffic so we have the the ability to um take it into roads and you could use the energy of people driving into a car park you could use that to power the lights in the car park itself you could use a toll booth that would be self-powered from everyone driving through the toll you could power yeah. all the street lights in certain areas of the city from the vehicles driving down a, a single street so there's some amazing use cases once you can scale this technology up amazing i saw you did a little one at, um i'm not saying little maybe at university of birmingham my old uni yes yeah so we've actually university of birmingham we've, we've got an installation that charges phones as students walk past and then also powers lights as so, they walk past so what like um wireless charging star so we've actually got some benches that are right next to it so oh, right. the people at the benches can sit and chill and plug the phone in um and, and then connect to the tiles and it's a benefit because it's like an off-grid solution you don't need to run hundreds of meters of cable to this like remote area in the middle of the uni you can actually just do the power where and when it's needed to make it really easy yeah. to do yeah, love that. Love that. Back to kind of we, we touched at the beginning, but how you like manage your time and you talked a bit about yoga and obviously running a company, doing what you do, um, you know, you've got a lot of stuff going on. How do you like organize yourself and organize your day? So I think that definitely there's other people out there who are going to have a, a 4 a.m. wake up and like a minute by minute rundown of exactly how they have their schedule. Um, I think I'm, I'm definitely more relaxed than that. But the way I like to do it, I think it's really important to do exercise in the morning um, to get ready for the day and move through it. I think that one thing we've got is we've got a really strong like, management team. So we make sure that daily, like first thing, check-ins with all of the team heads. So sales, um, technology, operations to make sure that works. And I think that the, the key thing to growing a, a business like this is you've got to spin lots of plates and yeah. you've got to keep them all spinning and you can't have any wobble and they've all got to be spinning. And that might be, you know, you, you spend so much time developing this new product that you're really passionate around. You forgot to do any marketing around that, that launch or yeah. you forgot to keep your investors updated. So there's, there's a massive challenge around how to keep those stakeholders involved. And I think a big part of what I'm doing in, on a daily basis is stakeholder management. Um, from we've got you know over 2,000 investors in the business. Um, we're backed by the richest two men in the UK, according to the last rich list. So the Hadunja uh, brothers are investors in the company. Um, so we've got some great investors, and, and they help us. And we work with them really closely. So a lot of it is working with, with those guys. Um, I'm, I'm pretty close to the sales and marketing, um, and yeah. then oversee some of the technology aspects. So it's really great. a balance of all those things every day, but you've got to come at it uh, with a really positive headspace because not every day is good. You, know, yeah, you don't yeah. go smiling every single day. It, it may look like from the outside, especially entrepreneurs, they, they, when they speak, that everything they touch turns to gold. Like, no way. It's not in reality. Like there's, there's, there's a hell of a lot of suffering behind the scenes to make something work, you know, yeah. and, and that's what we're really absolutely focused on is, is of making and finessing what we're doing to make the business yeah. as ready for scale as possible. Awesome. Have you ever had a mentor? Yeah, so one of my main mentors, you may know him, is a guy called Will King, the founder of King of Shaves. Yeah, yeah. So um, the guy started like a 23 million revenue uh, razor company against the likes of Gillette. 
And um, he's always been a, like a guide for me to help right. me through some of the, the tough times. And I think it's so important for um, entrepreneurs, especially when they're going through like a crazy journey at the beginning to have people that have been through that journey too, that can yeah. help them. And he's pretty good for keeping me level, level headed when really times are tough. Have you always, have you always had a mentor like that? Always someone just to kind of chat to talk about like the issues and just someone that's like unconnected to the business. Yeah. So I think I'm a, I'm a solo founder and the, the challenges of that are that it can be incredibly like lonely because you can't talk to your team like you would a fellow founder maybe who started with you. And I know a lot of really strong businesses do have a co-founder, which can sometimes be really beneficial. Um, but I think that in the early days, no, I didn't. So that, that was hard. And I, I went through lots of development, but the hard kind of development, the kind of, Oh, yeah. I worked for 20 hours straight for two weeks and then burnt out super hard. <laughs> or right. like, I just tried to do it, yeah, doing too much and just thinking that you're invincible and can work yeah. all hours. And, and that you just really learn that that isn't efficiency. Uh, efficiency is a balance of everything and making sure that you're mentally balanced, physically balanced, and, yeah. and then you can perform to your, um, to a hundred percent. Definitely. Now, when I started my business, I, I actually didn't have a mentor to start with either, but I had a few other friends that had started businesses around the same time. And I didn't realize it at the time, but you know, we used to call each other every, every week at the end of the week. It's like, how's your week been? What have you done? And it kind of like just holds you to account a little bit. It's really nice to just build that support network. And, oh, 100%. Uh, I think the power of the tribe is something yeah. really important. So um, Emma Sinclair taught me that. She's uh, one of the youngest women or the youngest woman to IPO um, in the world and she's based in London and she's always been like one of the, the elders in the entrepreneurship scene um, who has always kind of taught me the power of the tribe you know if I can give back five percent of my time to the community um, when I need them there'll be that five percent from them to help me and, and some of the most exciting things we've done have yeah. been through other founders to founders but it's checking in it's supporting each other it's making sure that everyone's kind of in this entrepreneurship hug uh, together being looked after yeah, no definitely because when you're going through it you're like it kind of gets all consuming and, and when you when you step back you realize actually everyone's going through a very similar journey similar challenges the sectors might be different the industries might be different but, but some of the main challenges are the same oh, always yeah. i think i think a really common thing i see is if i'm like mentoring a new ceo with a really exciting business they're literally in this trench looking straight ahead just yeah. 10 centimeters and focusing on this one little challenge and getting really worried about it and and i remember that i was that guy and all i did yeah. was look at that and then you can really help to like bring them up and give them the big picture thing yeah. rather than them really you know worrying about a voiceover for weeks for like their new video when actually yeah. forget about it move on there's so many other things to tackle and yeah. it's just like a one one example of how yeah. things can really help if you just step out of it a bit definitely it sounds like you're a mentor as well yeah, so I, I work. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. work with a few companies. I've I've invested in a few businesses where I see a journey similar to my own, and maybe yeah. like a, a similar similar kind of area that's in the kind of sustainability. Anything to do with green technology that involves building stuff, which is generally really hard and painful, um, is certainly a good one to to get involved in. That's your gig. Did you? Uh, could you see yourself if you, if you went back ten years or so doing what you're doing now? Is this what you always wanted to do or, or did you kind of just like you did you, you did uni sounds like you did engineering and you kind of you tried some things some things worked some things didn't i think i've always been like entrepreneurial and i didn't plan to do this i actually planned to to leave university and i i had lined up an internship in new york to work for like an amazing architecture firm that was designing all the street furniture in New York. And, and at the time that was amazing and the idea was really cool. Um, but I guess paved in just started flying and I thought, let's do this. Like, let's, yeah. let's go and drop everything. But I think that um, being an entrepreneur is something that has always suited my skill set. I think uh, I'm, a, I'm a designer and as a designer, design is not a linear process right so it's it's very similar to building a company you've got to be working on multiple things building it together i'm not a natural finance guy but i guess i have to learn about the joys yeah. of sitting on a pnl for two hours with a cfo um but i think those things can be learned and taught um, if you've got the right mindset to start off with 
definitely. Awesome. Thanks for joining me. Great chat. Um, when, uh, when all these supermarkets listen to this, how can they find you? So we're on pavegen.com. Um, yeah. And also Twitter is a really good one for us. So at Lawrence KC, L-A-U-R-E-N-C-E-K-C. Um, yeah, tweet us. We'd, we'd love to help. We want to find a way awesome. to, to make a difference. So thanks Amazing. so much. Really enjoyed uh, speaking today. Pleasure. No, thanks a lot for joining me. Keep up the great work. Sounds awesome. Um, and look forward to checking in again soon.